Session call to order uh, workshop for the members of the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District for today, Tuesday, January 18, 2022. Today's meeting uh, is being held in the boardroom in the district administration building and live stream for you. Great. So I'd like to welcome Scott Bilnamow, Lamb Associates, Scott Sindler, Jim Fries, our Director of Facilities, into our conversation tonight. I want to start with giving the board a three prong overview of where we stand in consideration of the capital workshop, intending to examine where we want to move forward with. First of all, just as a reminder for overview of funding, did go back this morning and verify what we currently have on hand is available. In our approved federal funding, we have $4,082,558 in approved federal funding. That does not include another potential uh, approximately $275,000 that could be coming directly from uh, the federal government through the county that also could be appropriated towards indoor air quality. But we have to be mindful some of that may be used for the current testing that we're required to do by the state of New York. We also have on hand approximately $5 million in cash in our capital reserves, which gives us just short of $9,100,000 that we could use towards current capital work. That's of course absent of any efficiency savings that we have from the 21-22 school year where we may be able to accumulate further capital and any other cash we may be able to accumulate on hand. That being said, if we look at, again, three different areas where we stand in terms of the work that we have been looking at, we have to remember that the federal money is generally to be appropriated towards improvements to indoor air quality, other health and safety issues, which roofing that we have been discussing would not be a component of. So anything that we're going to appropriate the federal monies towards, we need to look specifically at indoor air quality as we have been discussing. Obviously, our capital reserve money can be appropriated towards any work that we would consider in terms of roofing. Now that being said, as a component of our investigation into where our roofs currently stand, because we know that they're aged, we know that on our former BCS, uh, roofing was identified as something in need of being addressed on our last BCS and that has not unfortunately changed. We were able to do some patch work under the, uh, the former project and some a little bit of replacements but obviously we did not address all of our roofing work. This past week Tremco, a roofing manufacturer under the direction of Justin Fry, was on site with Jim Freeze for a better portion of the day trying to ascertain whether or not our roofs would be eligible for what we would call refurbishment versus having to go to a total replacement. As Matt had shared with us previously, if that was the case, there would be a significant cost savings realized with the possibility of a long-term warranty to be able to go along with any roof refurbishment. The good news is that I can come back to you and report on today at first glance from the core samples that they took this week. Tremco has seen that our roofs, every roof that they were able to take a look at this week, we would be eligible for the possibility of a roof refurbishment. Tremco did recommend that once we get to the appropriate temperatures, and that was in the report that I forwarded to you earlier today, that we still move forward with a scan to confirm the uh, investigation that they did make sure that there's no wet spots underneath the roofing membrane or any of the roofing materials that currently are there. As if that is the case, even though the roofs are eligible for refurbishment, if the underlayment is wet, if the insulation is wet, if there's anything underneath that is truly soaked, those portions would not be eligible for refurbishment. We'd have to look at the cost of replacement. With the anticipation, however, that we are eligible for refurbishment, the cost savings is significant. It's well in excess of, of just over, uh, on early calculations, of about $2.5 million. Jim 
Jim, do you want to just give the board a, a little bit of a high overview of the time that you spent with Justin? I know that they uh, they gave you a sample to share with the board so we could see what the recommendation might look like in terms of what a refurbishment would take. Sure, thank you, Curtis. Uh, as Curtis mentioned, uh, we did spend pretty much a full day going to all four of the roofs on our educational building. Uh, we looked at every roof except that I flew up and the other than the roof got some sampling. Um, we were excited that all of the uh, roof cuts appeared dry. We only found insulation value to be about R20, a little less than what the state requires now, but um, additional insulation I don't think is gonna contribute greatly to energy efficiency and cost savings down the road uh, to the point that we should that as a factor and based on the cost of roofing for a uh, restoration for a commit. Uh, so for those two reasons, um, you know, the fact that our roofs are substantially good, the existing roofs while aged and had their life expectancy, um, when they were originally put down, they were put down properly and good, uh, you know, with, with, within industry guidelines, so it was a good, what we call a good installation, which is, is great for us now. So while our rooms now are a prime candidate for our restoration, should we delay this to the point that our, we begin to realize leaks in the district, the district would be looking at a full replacement at significant amount. I have to say, initially, I was uh, skeptical of the restoration, but after spending the day looking at the, the product and the component, of which, of which there's a component that's used in the past in other districts that are there, um, I'm convinced that this could be a good avenue for the district to, to see where they are. I'm going to pass this around, but basically, it shows that you have your existing roof membrane, it's what they call a fluid applied uh, roofing system. So we take our existing roof and we get it ready for uh, the new installation. Uh, and that can speak a lot more than a lot of these roofs, I think, for a lot of districts. Uh, and by the way, we do intend to go take a look at some of the roofs that they're currently working on you know, prior to uh, going down the road. But basically, we take our existing roofs and we either you know, scrape and remove some of the gravel, or in the case where we have EPDM, uh, the roof is clean and prepped. And there's a primer that's applied, and there's a, uh, a base coat, and a, uh, like a fiberglass mat, and then there's the top coat. And what I like about the top coat is it's, it's white, and it's reflective of the sun, so it takes some of the, the solar gain off of our building. So that's one of the things, sorry. So while Jen's passing that around as well, if you look at page nine of the packet that uh, is on your desk in front of you, that gives you sort of a, a visual of what a finished product may look like. Again, as Jim said, they strip it down to uh, basically the bare coat so you can uh, apply the fluid roofing covering uh, efficiently. One of the, the greatest pieces that was explained to me was there are no seams the propensity for these to leak or for, the, for them to have any issues is negligible. And again, based on uh, our investment up front, we can realize as much as a 20-year warranty with this as well. If there are any roof penetrations that need to be made, i.e. we have to do any electrical repair, HVAC repair, anything that sits on the roof of the building, it's very easily repaired. They basically come in, mitigate the area, and we reapply in that particular area at the same time. So just, just a question for you. <clears throat> Jim, um, from my understanding with the Tremco, we, we're also not, we might not be tied to necessarily summer months. That's something where it's not very invasive during the school year that can be applied during, you know, during the typical school year as well, right? So that would help with the time crunch? I have done roofing work with uh, occupants in the building. Uh, I'm very careful about when we're, when we're loading product up on the roof, uh, you know, training product up on the roof. I, I like that done with loading underneath in case uh, there's an okay. issue with 
collapse or so forth. Um, and any of the noisy operations, such as you know, scraping and things of that nature, that can be done outside of uh, you know, school options by hours. Okay, but, so that so but, but, but they can work up and they, they can work and you know apply and that's why. Okay. If I could. Yeah, please. Uh, two parts to that question. I think you're talking about the VOCs, so the volatile, volatile organic compounds, which typically are associated with grouping products or not present in this type of grouping product. So from the standpoint of health and, and safety and welfare of the noxious odors, certainly could occupy the building. I agree with all Jim's sentiments about loading and unloading and you know, demolition disturbances. Uh, but it is temperature sensitive. So it doesn't extend the full season of year-round uh, ability to install. And uh, you will still be limited to what I would probably call a six, maybe eight month window okay. uh, of seasonal temperance that you're gonna require in order to install the product. Okay. Just looking at the magnitude of the projects that we're looking um, mm -hmm. to see you know, how long that and you know, what are the temperature recommendations to install that? You know, they have two products. Um, one is a little bit more uh, temperature sensitive and one that's less. So um, it really depends, they call it a, an aliphatic uh, product, um, which means it reacts with uh, water and temperature. And um, depending on which of the two products that they offer, uh, one will give you an extended window. So it, it really boils down to which product you ultimately specify. Not a huge price fluctuation between the two products. I mean, you're talking about uh, cents uh, on the total cost of $20 per square foot. So um, it might just be to everybody to uh, specify the more temperature or less temperature sensitive product, and that way we can extend that window. But it, look, I mean, we're, we're talking about a roofing job that traditionally for schools is done in the summer. And um, ultimately, you're going to want to time that installation to primarily hit the summer months because of the reasons that Jim already stated, which are the most important considerations the safety of your students and, and occupants inside the building, uh, having people up there working, roofing. Um, uh, workers, laborers aren't the most, um, uh, I would say, uh, they're perhaps not most politically correct. Uh, no, cool so um, uh, having them on, on site, and you, you do want to protect uh, and separate construction workers from your staff. And uh, so I'd say, ideally, you, you catch the summer, and uh, it still can swing into spring or fall, but it, it is all weather and temperature sensitive, and uh, some of them have higher uh, sensitivity. And, Je and Justin Fry, just to back that up a little bit, he was on site and said they, they will swing into the late spring or early summer and into the fall if necessary. Yeah. They, they've worked with the district to be flexible. They can flex their hours and do off hours at the same time to still work into the school year and either in, but simply when classes are not in session. I, I didn't install them that early in December. So that, that's why that's why I was, I'm pretty familiar with what we've done in a couple of buildings. Did we go on news square footage as being the most up to date accurate? I know we have yes. one prior. Yeah, so he presented two columns uh, in the spreadsheet that I see that uh, people have in their handouts. The left column at $18 a square foot to the right column at $20 a square foot is a range. Uh, $18 a square foot through traditional competitive bidding, like we're all accustomed to for the people who've been on this board for a while, that we've done in the past. Uh, that's the current market standard. Um, what Justin had provided in the right column, and, and again, just a high-low range, is that they offer through an Omnia cooperative a um, what they call a value-added proposition. You can kind of work through pre-approved roofing installers who use the Tremco product regularly, and you can have a bit more quality control and schedule control. So they could bid uh, the design while it's at the state awaiting approval. They could prepare their bid and be ready to install the product upon approval. Rather than waiting for SED to approve it, and as we've all gone through then, uh, queuing up a bid, to bidding it, to waiting for the results, to awarding a contractor, to installing, that could be anywhere from a six week process to a 12 week process, depending on the bid results. And because of that 12 week process, you could lose the window of working through your prime months in the summer, or potentially lose that window of opportunity where you end up in late December with temperature drop below 30 degrees, and you're no longer able to you know, install the product. So there is advantages. As far as the co-op goes, that's up to the legal and, and business administrator and, and a whole bunch of other parameters that, quite honestly, land would really want to be involved with. Um, if you should go that route, I, I do think there are advantages. And of course, the, the advantage to going competitive bid is you're going to get the lowest price, but you're also going to get the bidder who perhaps forgot something or is not as qualified as the other options. Thank you. I appreciate that.
maybe my question wasn't clear, but the square footage, square uh, footage down uh, previous ones in my notes, I had like TJ Hooker, for example, being like seven thousand square feet. Yeah, we limited. Now, now it's eighty thousand square feet. We limited when we provided the estimate uh, based upon the twenty fifteen BCS right. and land analyzed it. We looked at the roofs that had the highest priority of need. And so over the cafeteria in the 1960s back area of CJ Hooker was one of the oldest roofs. And so that was the one we identified it as having the most need. What Justin did was he just looked at everything and okay. assumed that everything was in need because it is all aging at 18 to plus 18 plus years old. And since we did our 2015 BCS, it's five years older. Um, knowing that if you were to wait for your next major capital project, you would be outside of the window of its expected serviceable life. So he just broadcast, here's what I think it would take to do the whole thing. Right. Well yeah, so there are discrepancies between the square footage as you reported prior and the cost, of course, depends on those square footage. So, so just taking that a step further, you have two reports when it comes to roofing. You have the construction costs that Tramco has reported gives you both the minimum and the outer boundaries for roof placement, essentially covering every roof, with the exception of the district office, with the exception of transportation, with the exception of the annex at the middle school as well. Every roof and all of them. Correct. Uh, almost all of the roofs. If you look if you look if you look at every marking uh, for every building, it shows you exactly what you expect out. The additional piece that Matt provided, so we would have total anticipated cost, was a rough workup for contingency fees, escalation fees. So we, we would know our outer boundaries if the board said tonight, move forward with trying to figure out and replace every roof in the building. I'm sorry, every roof in the district that has been specified in this report. So the second piece that you have on roofing is that outer boundaries, as we know, with information with what we know with, with market estimates, with volatility, everything that we have, the most current information is in the previous report. Okay, can I just ask a quick one? Sure. Um, we, we really, if we want to do every building as presented, we really don't have that much because we don't really have five million to go outside and use it. Agreed. So just so we're all on the same page, we got, we're looking to do roofing and this is what we have to. The non UV, am I using the right term now? Sure, sure, so far. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good. Then. This is not my fourth day. Um, the non UV or ventilator money is really about five million. Yeah, so uh, I right. heard the estimate is if you could approach a roofing. Yeah, yeah but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, and then the next page, just to take that a step further, though, I thought the, the last estimate is all roofs here. The A and B option were sort of speculation. Uh, right. A being you could bundle SAS and GHS together for about $4.3 million. You could bundle SAS and GIS for about $3.1 million. And I didn't provide a bundle with CJ Hooker School, to be honest with you, because um, the way we prioritized the work in evaluating 2015 was that there was only 7,000 square feet. And if you wanted to tackle that based on some of the contingencies and escalation, we could make that an alternate and we could build in attacking that one particular area. Or if at the direction of the Board of Ed you wanted us to prepare a new estimate considering CJ Oker, no problem. I just wanted to think about it strategically. Yeah, we can, and, try, uh, we can try to figure that out anyway. I appreciate that work. So in your opinion, do you think the contingency and escalation is fair with the you know, age of the buildings? Yeah. They're in. The contingency would be adequate to cover, uh, Dr. Coates uh, reported earlier, that if you found an area of wet insulation that needed to be torn down to the deck, um, I'm going to say your report was mostly accurate, but there was one inaccuracy, and I'm sorry to point this out. Um, <laughs> you could still undertake a restoration project rather than going through a full blown replacement project, even if you find some areas of wet insulation. What they're going to do is they're going to take that section out and they're going to rebuild it in life and time to match the depth so that you get the taper to the roof drains that you still need. Uh, they'll build that back up and they, they, the most of the roof will be a restoration. For that particular area, you'll have new coatings, but it's still the same liquid applied coating. So it's gonna be one monolithic looking finished product. It's just so, it just so happens that if there are areas wet, you're gonna have to cut it out and then build it back up. So the contingency would be adequate to cover what we don't know and what we might find during construction. Escalation is what we would call a wild, you know, a wild guess. And, um, based on the market factors that 
factors right now, we feel like the cost per square foot that Justin's providing through Trimco is probably about as the peak of the market per se. Okay. Unless we had a major storm that collapsed Texas or some of the other major insulation producing plants where you have market volatility, I think I think we've got it covered in escalation. Does this project let's say we did some really good rate and SAS in some form. Do we need the construction manager? My opinion, and I, I'm sure Scott agrees with that, he talked about it, is that based on the scope of work and the limited amount of work in the focused areas, I don't think you do. Based on our proximity and availability and assisting Jim and staff here, we're gonna be watching the job. Um, we endorsed and, and recommended hiring a CM when the project was a much more significant project. So I think you'll understand that you know, we don't just selectively say get a CM every time. We try to scale it for the fit. And if we look back in history too, we've done some small projects with land prior to what we have not had a CM and they've been able to manage the work effectively and appropriately. All right, so that's going to be an important factor if we make a decision. So really yeah. we can kind of eliminate the last section. Uh, we didn't, I didn't provide a CM cost in the roofing estimates because I just don't know. No, no, I'm just saying, yeah. In the, in the, uh, so when we get into heating ventilation and air conditioning, we have two packets also that were sent to earlier. You have the four different options that Scott had prepared that the board had viewed or had been briefed on in the prior board meeting. And then today, based on some of the uh, anticipated cost savings by our roof being eligible for restoration versus for, for replacement, I did ask uh, Scott Matt to go back today and revisit some of the possibilities for cooling. I think given the fact that we are going to have approximately $4.1 million in federal funds, we're going to see a significant cost savings in terms of the ability to restore our roofs we're at a point where I'd, I'd really ask the board truly to go back and reflect on the possibility of adding cooling in the Scotchtown. I think that we're not going to be in this position again anytime soon. When you look at indoor air quality and what it does for health and wellness within the buildings, where you look at what it does in terms of preserving the interior, the humidity control, everything that it does for the facility itself, I would ask the board to go back and reflect on, is this a possibility? I'm gonna let Scott walk you through, if that's okay, Scott, sure. the options that you sent. Board, I did share them earlier today. You can explain what's included and what's not included in the three options that you sent earlier today. Sure. So the, the biggest number, right, that's the full option number two from the study. So that's taking care of all of the air conditioning needs within the building. Um, that gets the new vents replaced and air conditioning goes to the classrooms. And then from there, everything else is sort of a replacement. Uh, gym rooftop unit currently has no air conditioning that would get removed and replaced and air conditioning would be added to it. The cafetorium currently has uh, no air handler associated with it, just a couple of small exhaust fans and some supply fans. So we would add a rooftop unit and duct work in there for cooling. The next couple of line items are replacing existing rooftop units, um, which are currently over 20, or around 20 years or a little bit more, depending on where you are in the building. Um, to replace those, again, with something in kind, although we would be suggesting that we put in gas heat and remove the hot water flow from there, um, gas heat is gonna take care of any breathing concerns that may be had with the hot water coil in there, and it's a lot more easier to maintain. Um, so that would be for the main office area, the reading room, the computer room, the library, um, and the open office area. That piece that has to get added to, anytime we're gonna add air conditioning to that building, a large chunk of it, we gotta do the electric service upgrade as well. Uh, and that's the last line item on there. We currently it's only 1,200 amps. And to provide air conditioning throughout, we're gonna have to pump that up to 2,000. Um, so that first sheet is that's the full blown project on there. Um, if 
does include the CN, right? So that line item on there, based on what we're talking about tonight, that can come out. So you know, wipe off three hundred thousand dollars off of that bottom line. Um, so roughly seven point three million dollars to do everything in that building that we've been talking about uh, as part of the HVAC stuff. Um, from there, right, the, the next two are um, I basically I broke this one out a little bit further. So now we're just looking at the unit ventilators themselves. So classrooms and the faculty spaces. Uh, the, the first one is adding the air conditioning, and it, I was still carrying the number in there for a construction manager, so about $6.2 million. Um, if you flip to the next page, it's adding the air conditioning, but there is no CM. So this is uh, classroom unit ventilators, adding air conditioning, replacing the unit ventilators to the faculty spaces, which already had cooling, so that's a, almost like a light for light swap. Um, the electric service upgrade, there's somebody in there for replacing some relief air dampers, which I think should be taken on as part of the project anyway. Uh, and that's $5.9 million. Right, so that's kind of like uh, the, the range of values there. So classroom unit ventilators and air conditioning, all the way up to doing the entire building. Um, what's, what's important to note about the first one is that you know, it's kind of like a, a menu of options there. You know, you, you can do the classroom unit ventilators and then just do the main office rooftop. All those other systems, they're all independent, so they don't have to be done. I mean, they're all, they've all aged, but they're operational. So you can basically pick and choose what you want to do after the classroom unit. So I just wanted to, to take Scott's comment one step further. And Matt, give me a good grade this time. Tell me if I do a well this time. One of the, the advantage, one of the most advantageous ways of, of the way that Land has presented this to both the administration and the board is it gives us the opportunity, if you will, to mix and match. And if we think back to the prior capital improvement project, having the board says go forward tonight and start to prepare this as a formal project to the state. Our SED submittal can give the board the opportunity that once all this work gets approved through SED, depending on how we bid the project, whether we go through a cooperative bid and or we put the bid on the street, to see how the bids come back to really finalize the scope of work at the time. If the board says certainly move forward tonight, send everything to SED, when I say everything, cooling, steam piping, unit replacement, grouping, get everything approved so that when approval comes back and we can get the bid packages on the street, we can see, okay, let's say we have $9.1 million available, well, what are we gonna get for our money at that time to finalize the scope of work that would be completed? But again, I, I just, I, I would be remiss if I didn't make that recommendation based on the cost savings that we would potentially see from savings and grouping to at least not consider adding cooling to the anticipated project in Scotch Town. I think the benefit over time is certainly going to be of great value to our students, be of great value to our staff, and community use that we could see in that building over the summer as well. I'll stop talking now. Talk to you Questions? Comments? Uh, just, yeah, just my concern is the contingency, you know, and I just, you know how things go in construction, you know, you open up something and it could be a lot worse or just, I hope not, you know, handle it. I, I mean, but I totally trust you guys, so. Uh, this is a project with very little risk to find things with direct equipment to place, because we're going to try to get into the steam tunnel, tunnels, yeah. take a look at the piping before we make the final decision. That doesn't mean you can't make a decision to proceed in good faith with the information you have now. Right. Okay. And understand that if we report back to you later, maybe you have to dial back something. Or that there's a good amount of contingency escalation and uh, consideration placed into our budgeting to know that if the numbers come back very favorably, you might be in a much better position right. down the road than we are today. And, and, and then, yeah. 
it's, it's a lot of money. Just, and and yeah. there's a lot of volatility in the market, and that's the reason why there's such a huge mm -hmm. amount of money associated with it. Just worried about the issue we had at, you know, CJ Cooker in the middle Yeah. Where, you know, we found those issues. So that's all. Okay. I mean, I trust you guys, and that is a lot of money, as Tom said. So I'm not sure about that. Yeah, um, also to my, my only question is the reasoning between picking which building. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily have a preference, I'm just curious. For which car? For the air conditioning. Yeah. So, so if I speak from an operational perspective, mm -hmm. first of all, we, we have cooled a significant part of the high school. They, they do have cooling centers that exist for when we think about behaviorally what we see when the buildings get warm. Mm -hmm. The great, greatest struggles that we have are with our youngest students when the buildings get warm. If we look at this, and Scott, I don't, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna use Middletown as an example. Middletown picked a different building every three to five years that they were going, that they were gonna try to move forward with at the same time it was a phase of growth. If the board does consider cooling as part of this project, I would encourage the board down the road as you look at small projects, you can consider another building or a portion thereof as you move forward. I think if we, you know, going back to some of the information that Jim Fries shared in the previous meeting, where we start to see some of the other health concerns or somewhere in between the intermediate school and the middle school, when they start to come on board with having to install 80 some odd unit uh, air conditioners in the classrooms, that to be honest, are enormously inefficient. It's like a three to five year roadmap plan going forward. Is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Tom? I'm not going to say that for a second. You can believe that. Yeah. Really? Good. Uh, question. Is it all or none? Roofing? The whole roof? Do you pick section though. Pick section. Whatever you whatever approach you want to do. I think the forensic testing if we find any leaks would tell us that we need a prior vector in those areas first. Which is the same approach we took back in 2014, 15. Yeah. Once we did the forensic analyses, we had planned to do GIS and prioritize doing a lot of work with GIS. My recollection is we found a lot of wet areas at SAS and sort of reprioritized them, refocusing on we let the science tell us what the, what the highest need is. Mm -hmm. uh, for right now, the cores um, look good. The, the experts tell us that they have a product they can use, and that's the information we have on them. Okay. Um, so if I could comment, the, uh, the science might tell us that all the rules are about equal. They might not tell us which one we should do first. So I would recommend we look at all the travel rules first, as opposed to the uh, EDM. Also, well, which one would that be? Sorry? Which rule of gravel? I think that was in the report that you look at the other pictures. You pretty much see the gravel versus the EDM sort of different colors. Yeah, there are only so many liabilities in there. The other thing you consider is if you do one setback versus others. You do the setback closest to the. Sorry. Uh, if you do the setback closest to the roof entry, and then you have to do another setback, you end up walking across your new roof. Uh, you know, it's supposed to protect it and all that. But, um, you know, should the, the rules that we don't do at the same time begin to fail, and you kind of end up crossing over the roof because it's more walking. For the roof, it's not a good operational uh, thing. Another thing is you have to keep track of all the rooms you didn't do. And, uh, I just think it's better if you can do a building at a time. And it should also be done with that building, and then you, you know that you have to do roof and, uh, and look at that in 20 years from now. So, what was I right? Can you, can you make out from the picture? 
With that information, the Board of Ed will make a determination based upon their findings and independently analyze the adverse environment, the potential adverse environmental impact, of which I assume you will decide that there was no environmental impact, and you'll issue a negative declaration stating that in a board resolution. That board resolution becomes the basis for which you can proceed with the capital project, and then you will issue uh, a public uh, notice with the intention of undertaking a capital project for a vote, presumably going to coincide with your budget vote as part of a capital transfer. Uh, all of your procedural T's will have been crossed at that point. And as far as the project um, summarizing exactly what the scope of work is, we don't really need to make that decision today. Uh, I think it would behoove everybody here to come to an agreement about which areas are the highest priority, take a focus, understanding that we'll design anything you tell us and we can design scalability uh, but if you want to have us design everything we get paid to design everything in advance and you might not use all that intellectual property and, and that's unfortunate but that might be a risk you have to take in order to find out what the bid results are down the road we're certainly not going to charge you to provide ca services on the whole project if you don't want to take the whole project so there's some clawback money that's involved with that but we'll do whatever you tell us like i said and uh, as far as scalability of it goes we design all that on the front end. So once you have the bid results, you can make a decision about what the final scope of work is. But I think the message to the community is, um, due to market volatility, um, you would like to undertake as much work as your budget will permit. And so you've asked the architects and engineers to provide a project design that is scalable. You've asked them to design a project that may be more than you can afford. And the market conditions will dictate what the final scope of work is, whether it's all a portion or a limited portion. And just to highlight one thing that Matt said, if it is still the board's intent to have this be a referendum with the annual budget vote in May, we are getting close to having to draw a line in the sand to say, start in the middle of February, I need to be able to begin to work with Maureen, work with Land to get the secret process started, get the 45 day notice out to the public, as Matt just explained, with the potential intended scope of work so that it can go as a referendum before the public. Can. So real quick, could you highlight what the most critical pieces of this project would be? Yes and no, it's really up to you. Um, we can tell you that there are a lot of components in here um, that are vital to planning for the future. You can also say that in terms of indoor air quality, there are, um, it's an advantageous moment to capitalize on the $4 million to invest into an HVAC project. As far as what your priority is, um, there are, are, there's a lot of aging infrastructure, and how you want to prioritize that, we've given you a huge report recommending uh, multiple schools need multiple line items of work. Uh, the decision really is up to you. The, the, the roof evaluation to date hasn't said that one roof is in more dire need than another. So um, it's level footing for us to say you should do this or that. Uh, it's, it's your discretion. So I'm sorry I can't really answer directly and say you should do this. Um, it's really up to the board. But it sounds like, based on the information you've given us, that if you don't have time to plan accordingly for future projects, but just really want to capitalize on this four million right now and do something rather than not do something. And even though in the back of our head we're like, oh, GHS really does need the roof done, but hey, we need to use this four million right now to get that roll. That's kind of how I interpret it. They have an expiration right. of that funding, and yeah. so you're on the clock to make that decision. How you want to uh, bundle in other work? Um, it makes sense if you were going to do it, work at SAS if you were to do the roof at SAS. I mean, right. That's logical. Yeah. Just like if you chose to do GIS as a priority, bundling in the roof work at GIS would make sense. So, to answer your question, I mean, I think if you're going to tackle an HVAC project, invest four million dollars, uh, subsidize by the federal government, and tack on a little bit of extra to get what you above and beyond what they did, um, then you should bundle in a roof replacement for restoration project. I'm also thinking too, like we're using that project, like Curtis is saying, that we start with SAS and let's say, like you said, we do the roof and do the HVAC there, and next in line would be GIS. So if we can't do HVAC at GIS, at least we get the roof, and then we keep going forward that way. We did do substantial work with GHS. I just, I always feel so terrible for CJ Harper. And, and mainly it's not because it's it's because of the asbestos. You know, that's a lot of the Anyway, and, we talk, and we talked about that. Unfortunately, anytime you talk to CJ Hooker, you're always looking at the basement. I know. I know. Good. 
matters. A couple of pretty matters. I just throw something else out there. We were looking at one building at a time. I want to say this got to come out. You could afford a roof in HVAC and still with a little money left for other things you could consider. It might be the flooring and inside the building is coming out from a terrific time. With that, it's a special containing product. The kind of cost we have to kind of repair it and keep it coming from the side. I think that's kind of systemic at this point. It's not localized to one room or one corridor. The other thing to consider might be to uh, eliminate the well house and eliminate the oil tank in the ground. That's the thing. Maybe you can do all those projects together. And you're almost uh, maybe even pipe in the drainage ditch that's outside and put the proper fence up for it. And so we need to we have the money to do those items. We do that whole building and then move on and really never have to go back to capital. Yeah, yeah, I think that approach would be appropriate for us to do Okay. That would require us to design some things that we haven't even looked at. So it's hard for me to say on the fly that I know exactly what Jim means. <laughs> um, certainly know all yeah. of and some of the other projects. Right. Uh, as far as the extent of flooring and how you scale it up, we, we could look at it. Uh, but just to speak to the secret process again. Not going to create an adverse environmental impact. You can certainly act on uh, routine capital projects at SAS, uh, various projects you can claim in, in the, um, refer uh, refer the, bu the budget vote. You can describe it as miscellaneous projects so that it's, uh, it's clear enough that the public understands that they're voting to transfer the money for a certain amount of work and that there are miscellaneous projects associated with that if possible. Uh, that's the clarity that you're going to look and you're going to need legal dialogue. Uh, Legal counsel for that dialogue as far as how clear it needs to be and how concise it needs to be. Because it, it effectively is a question you're asking the public to answer and talk. Right. And then theoretically, you can always list the third group, as I say, to a substantial savings in escalation or contingency, right? You could. Um, I, I think the risk you run there is saying to the public that we might do a group. And uh, when they don't get it because uh, whatever reason happens. Yeah, uh, I, like, I like your approach before you had a very nice dialogue. My last comment was that uh, some of these numbers were included in the uh, 2015 DCS. If you let that be your guide, that could be the extras that you might do it for. Paul, it's just a development rule. Um, and then, just in general, what we're trying to do is keep a, a good roof over our heads. And we're trying to improve our indoor air quality with the four components of uh, temperature control, humidity control, particulate, and uh, maybe one or two other items. But if uh, you don't have air conditioning, you kind of just have the temperature control and all the humidity. And this project theoretically is going to be one, two years out, right? Okay. Out of two? Four, four, eight, eight, eight. Yeah, um, so let's say hypothetically you pass, let's skip, let's skip all the time, okay? So yeah. Pass the budget in, in net. And we begin designing the project, whatever it is. Um, Scott and I, Gerard and Land, will start preparing design documents based on what we understand the scope of work now. A roof restoration project at whatever, and a uh, UV uh, replacement and um, HVAC upgrades at whatever. Uh, my timeline, from Land's standpoint, to design the roof restoration. The project, from our standpoint, from a detailing perspective, is fairly um, uniform across the district. So the details that we prepare for one school, we can use for the other schools. And that's why we show representative cost savings uh, of five and a half percent for individual schools versus five percent for bundling schools together. We can get into the details of negotiating fees down the road. But um, ideally, some of those details are useful for multiple schools. And 
there's a savings from the design standpoint of us packaging everything together. Um, on the flip side of that is his details are mostly uh, customized for the location. And um, I don't know that he can see the same economy of scale, which means that his labor and the length of time for him to prepare a drawing for our associates is still going to, it's still dependent on what the final scope of work is. So, although we're saying scalability, scalability, if you go for the largest HVAC project you can afford at SAS, the timeline will be dependent upon how quickly your our associates can prepare those drawings. Because I strongly feel that preparing the roof restoration drawings are going to be fairly simple and routine for us. That being said, I don't know, Scott will put you on the spot, how long it might take you from June to design an HVAC project of like roughly $7.3 million at SAS. Uh, well, we, I, mean, I would say just to do unit ventilator replacements, if we started the last day of school, uh, well, July 1, we could probably have our design up to SED end of September or late October. Okay, so the unit uh, doing a full project is probably November, December submission of this. Okay, so we have no problems making, making both of those and being done sooner. And even if we separate the two submissions and you want to get progress on a roof restoration project, get it ready, get it to the state. I think we could be doing a roof restoration project the following summer. Okay. Uh, the Omnia Co-op probably provides you with the best avenue for expediting and getting to that end. So, I don't think there are co-op opportunities to shorten and abbreviate the bidding schedule. So I would say that uh, depending on how long SED takes to review it, which is really the wild card here, we, we look at their backlog and scheduling, and it's usually six to eight weeks these days, six to ten weeks on engineering. Um, that's the shortest I've ever seen it in my entire career. Uh, I've never seen that quick of a turnaround. Now I've never even gotten despite submitting projects in the last few years with that timeline, I've never gotten them back in six to 10 weeks. I've never gotten a review in six to 10 weeks. And I've gotten pre-screening comments, which by very nature of the name, pre-screening means it happens before they review. I'm getting those after they review the architecture and engineering. They don't have enough staff at SDP to even review your projects right now. So even though they say they have a backlog of six to 10 weeks and they might start reviewing it in that timeline, I'm getting, it's taking me two months to get simple comments back. It's totally unpredictable as you right now. The best guess I can give you is roof restoration, I think, could get done next summer. Um, but I would plan on all of these projects being done the following summer, just to be concerned. And the messaging should be, we will try to catch summer 2023. Realistically, we're gonna take the most conservative route and plan for summer 2024. If we are fortunate enough to have additional capital reserve items, are we allowed to have that to a project? So it depends. It depends on how we write the proposal for multiple sources of funding to be able to fund an individual project. So we'd have to discuss that well in advance of how we're going to write that. So that it all has to be voter approved. So if you were going to add capital work, it has to go as a line item as transfer of capital within your operating budget, but that also has to be voter approved. Right? Okay. 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 Ah. Just to be clear, the 4.3 federal money, that can be used on any of these, right? It can be used on eligibility, right? Uh, Airball. Airball. Okay. Airball. 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 You can't, can you put it towards the service upgrade? Yeah, that's part of it. So that's so any of these sheets for can be used. Yeah, correct. So long as the service upgrade is to support the HPA. No, 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 I got you. Right. Okay. I don't know. And again, I think going back to what Matt said, as long as there is a general a general consensus for the administration to start to prepare the seeker resolution, the board really has some runway here to make a final determination on the scope of the work. I think what's important as we, as we start to come to consensus on that, as it quote unquote becomes a project that we are going to present to the public, 
we have to be open and transparent about what the anticipated scope of work will be done by asking for X amount of dollars from the public to be able to finalize that project. What we really need to come to consensus on tonight is if you're comfortable with what has been proposed in terms of dollars for what we're asking you for, now we have a couple of weeks here to finalize that decision. While in the background, I can start to work with land, prepare the seeker, we can start to talk about prepping our, our contract for how we would work with our subcontractors, and then be design engineering, architectural engineering, and then be able to be prepared for the May vote to present this to the public for consideration. Yeah, I think, um, obviously, I think we're on board with moving forward. You know, we started this process probably a year ago. <coughs> uh, almost, I think, right, Matt? I, mean, I think pretty close. We've been talking about it for a while. Yeah, right. That's, it. That's not uncommon. So we've been talking about that we start the process to really get to this point. You know, we have four million federal money, but I think we can move forward on that day because I don't know where they are, which max school we want. Yeah. And just to be clear on your, your previous comment, we're, we're going to be asking the public to allow us to use the money that's already been approved in the capital reserve and how much is money. Correct. This would be no additional borrow. And, and just to narrow that down even a little bit further, I think we'll have gleaned from previous conversations with the board, the HVAC upgrade, regardless of the final decision, will be housed in Scottsdale Avenue. And then beyond that, potentially what scope of work in terms of roofing rehab that we could do that we could fit within the budget again without asking the community to borrow additional funds. I think that would be accurate. I think the only wiggle room I like is try to find is if, if there was extra money or we had money at the end, if there's any units we could replace at GIS or anything like that, and we should have that wiggle room. Yeah, it's easy for us to design it. And the hard part is guesstimating how much it's going to cost, how much money you're going to have left over. Yeah, I know. But we, guys we, it. But we have the money left over, and we could replace one of them. I mean, I think that would be beneficial for your quality of the SIS to complete SIS and start with that. I think what you're talking about is the legal notice and how it's worded and how important it's crafted by your legal counsel. So that uh, should you get to the point where you're in this good position of having extra money, um, that either we've designed it so you're ready to do it, or you make the decision to have us design it at that point, and then we go to SED later on and we go back and we get approval from SED and we do a separate project down the road. That's another option. And you yeah. might not want to make that decision today, but the legal notice requesting the public to vote on something should be clear enough and vague enough at the same time to allow you the opportunity and freedom to use the extra excess funding if you have. Yeah, that's where our communication is. Appreciate that. Any other questions or comments? No? Can we just go back to the uh, CM for a moment? Yeah. Um, what would you probably already said it, I apologize. What is your opinion on, on having the CM on this HVAC uh, project? I, I think what Matt said to follow what Matt said before, keeping it one building simplifies it. Okay. I think once you start bouncing to multiple buildings, that's where the value of the CM comes in. Well, that's all I mean. Yeah, I think if it's within one building, okay. especially just looking at unit or replacement, with air and air conditioning, it's, it's much simpler. Let's keep in mind, Jim's got finite resources and, and he has obligations and he's a great resource to be involved with the project, to watch it unfold, to assist everybody here. Um, but when you spread him too thin, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but this is generally the consensus to your the facility director. Multiple projects in multiple areas, when they have to start bouncing around, doesn't allow them to uh, focus on their day-to-day -day operations. And it's distracting. And Jim's Work with Jim in the past, he's done a great job on the type of projects we've worked on. Uh, but we find the more significant, the more complex, and, and the more spread out, the more complicated it is. So. Any other questions? We're going to talk about some of this amongst ourselves, too. We're going to talk about that. <coughs> Not this one. Back to you. I'll bounce it off you later. Okay. Nothing else? Nothing else? Nothing else? Any final, final comments? We appreciate the opportunity to present our work to the I appreciate all your work. It's very, very clear and concise. I appreciate that.
Thank you. Jim, thank you for all your work, too. Thank you. I, I just yeah. say that I'm happy to be talking about some good strong potato pork for the board. And it, I really think they can rest assured that whatever you do, it's not a mistake. Where we put our shovel is moving forward in the right direction. But I don't think you can make a mistake here. Like it was a project with any sort of Yeah, I appreciate the board. Uh, focused on this a while back and I think it's coming to fruition. I think it's absolutely needed. Yeah, I have a move for you. Yeah, right. We can move our web policy. Okay, great. Uh, do we need a motion for the workshop? Sure. Sure. Any motion for the workshop? Allison? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go